Welcome back guys. This is part three of the F20 restoration. I'll update you on what all I've done. So most of the tractor's been reassembled. The wheels have not been put on yet, but um, so I reassembled the hood and everything, put all the mechanical stuff back together. So it does run. It does run. I'll show you in the next video, in the next clip here, it running. So that's all done. Got everything timed. <clears throat> so this tractor is almost ready. Hard to believe. But yeah, you can see all the uh, moke rising off of the manifold and the exhaust pipe from the paint uh, that, that that got on it. It's burning off. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Huh. Started up not horribly hard, but not, not super easy. But, you know, first startup, not bad. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, hey guys. So, went on a little vacation uh, to South Dakota. We're back now. And uh, so, back to the Frontier Hay Rake. So, as I said in the last video, the 4700 John Deere Lawyer Tractor is back. Now it's time to get this hay rake. We gotta get the front rotor and the undercarriage to a uh, place down south that does uh, that, that will work on this machine. So, we're gonna get that taken care of. We, we currently got it off. Now we're just trying to get the rotor out from underneath. It was a pretty easy removal. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. And we're going to get Farmall F20 wheels here soon. So, yeah. All right, guys, back to an F20 update. So when we took those parts for the hay rake, but we also we took a little extra trip over to a guy who had a bunch of old tractor parts. Very nice old fellow. He had a lot of neat equipment and parts. But we got these. Tires are junk, but, we're gonna, but we can get new tires. Biggest thing is we got rims, because um, one of my other rims was junk, and the other one was pretty rusty. But these ones are pretty nice, really nice. They were off a, re a restored tractor at one point, so we're gonna get the rims all sandblasted and coated uh, by a professional paint shop we know, and then we're gonna get the tires um, changed on them, and then we'll put them on the tractor, which is behind this door. Uh, I'll show you guys the tractor in a little bit. So yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, got a bucket in there. I need to fix something on the sediment bowl, but decals are on. I got the front wheels on. All oh, it runs as I showed you earlier. So this tractor is all ready to go besides those the rear wheels. We just gotta get the rear wheels done and this tractor is set to go. So yeah, that's a little update. Say hi to the cats. They like hanging around here. But yeah, pretty soon these will be on here. Pretty exciting, guys. Pretty exciting. So for those of you that don't know, we've been going through an extreme drought in our in these areas here in Iowa and other states. Um, we just got a pretty good rain last night. First one in quite a while. The corn pretty much gave up like a week before we got this rain. Our soybeans, though, over there are they were still green enough and they still and they and they they, they uh they made it through the, the heat and they the this rain benefit they benefited from the rain the pods filled out there were a decent amount they filled out so here's an ear of corn i picked from here this is one of we have like an average of like two two or three sizes this one in our meat in the medium size are more common it's just be, due to just water and how much and, and the whatever soil type was in what part of the field, you know, which area had more was a, was a little richer than the other. We have big ears in some places and small ones in some places. So it's just it's going to be a pretty um. I think this fall's harvest we're going to have yields that are kind of kind of just kind of up and down. You know, they're going to be great in one spot probably and, and not so great in another spot. I mean, this ear 
feels good. These kernels aren't too small, actually, but this ear's kind of short, though. But yeah, that's kind of what we have going on here. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty bad situation. A lot of the guys who put around it here who planted their early beans and corn, their stuff pretty much didn't benefit at all from this rain. It all gave up pretty, pretty, pretty long time back, like at least a couple weeks ago or more. So there's pretty much this rain ain't gonna do much for that stuff because it died. But our, the only soybeans I can really see that benefited a lot were ours and uh, one or two of our neighbor's fields that were planted roughly closer to the same time. But yeah, that's. That's just what we'll, I mean, we'll take what we'll get, but yeah, this is an interesting year. It's been an interesting year. So here's the bean field. As you can see, we got yellow leaves in places, but the stems and the majority of the plants in all the pods are still green. And from this rain, these pods went from flat to actually pretty decent. The ones on the lower part of the plant are a lot better, a lot better than the ones up top. So these beans this rain saved them otherwise we were on the verge of possibly not having a bean crop or harvesting because there would have been just nothing here but yeah it definitely filled out a lot the rest of the field i think besides us there's a sand hill back there that the drought basically just destroyed so we're probably not going to pick that we might just chop that up but um i think we're good on having a, i think we're gonna have a soybean crop this year and, and we're gonna have a corn crop yeah, we're basically right here. So here's a pod. And here's the ear of corn. So, I mean, it's going to vary in place to place, but I'm definitely going to say I noticed an improvement on these pods. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.